Hi, my name is Colin Fain. I'm the CEO of Agronometrics. And today I want to use the Blueberry Global Trade Data and help understand how all of these issues in shipping that we're hearing in the news um, could potentially affect the industry. And so we're going to look at the what the numbers are going to say about this. And at the very least, my perspective on um, on what I think could, could possibly happen. Um, this is primarily because of two issues. One, the water levels in the Panama Canal. And on the other side, everything that we're hearing about the Babel Mandab, I'm probably not saying that right. I apologize. Um, over, over in the Middle East and the Houthi attacks and, and everything related to that. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll dive right in. Oh, point of, point of note. Um, this isn't entirely coming out of the blue. Um, I'd recommend a, another YouTube channel called what's going on with shipping. Um, the link will be down in the description. It's a really interesting channel. If you like shipping, um, I, I do, I, I think it's super interesting. So, um, so I've been watching those guys for a while, and that's kind of part of the inspiration for, for this video. Um, so we start off with the Panama Canal. And on the 15th of December, it was announced that they were going to increase the daily transits to 24 starting in January. That's a modest increase. Um, it was at 22, and it was expected to go down to 18. So that's actually relatively good news. They got a bit more humidity, um, a bit more precipitation than, than expected. However, um, keep in mind that the normal scenario would be 36 transits during the day for each day. So that, that is a bit of, of an issue that could affect the, the industry, considering that pretty much I'm um, most of, of the blueberries that it transit from country to country in our industry, um, trans, or at least a lot of them transit by boat, um, especially coming out of Latin America, um, going up to either the East Coast markets of the US or, or Europe. And so what's the, why, why is this happening? Um, they're not necessarily worried about the water lakes now, but they're worried about what the water lakes are going to look like in the future, because um, we'll see it in, in the next page. But um, this is where the water is expected to be, 87 feet, and this is where it currently lies. So we can go to the Gatum Lake levels, um, another interesting data courtesy of the Panama Canal authority. And I think this chart is, is very telling. So looking at the average over the past five years, um, January is meant to have the highest water levels of the lake. That's right after the rainy season. So you can see rain builds up from June clear through December and then, or through January. And then in January, it starts to recede as we go into the dry season where it is expectedly dry. Um, the water levels now are at 81.6 feet, not very high. Considering that the five-year average, the lowest that the water's been on average has been in May at 82.5. So we're already below this level. And the concern is as we go through the dry period, how low will this water level go? So they don't wanna send as many ships through because they don't want to completely dry up the lake and that would limit the amount of ships that can go through. Um, keep in mind that the Panama Canal is basically fed by a um, big lake that sits between the two oceans. So this is slightly above the, the sea level and this big freshwater lake is fed by rain during the rainy season. So as a ship goes through the lock, water from this lake goes down into the lock and that's what raises the boat. And then it can continue going um, through the canal. If there's no fresh water from the lake 
to, to feed these locks, then waters can't move from one ocean to the other. So that's the issue. And that's not, not a minor issue. Um, another effect of the low water levels is that they're already putting limits on the draft or the depth that the boats can have going through the canal, which can limit the number of containers that they carry. And by extent, the volume that, that travels through, through the canal. Um, within our industry, this will be most seen by Latin American exporters that are sending their fruit, as was previously mentioned, to the east coast of the US, or they're sending their fruit across the Atlantic to Europe. Um, this is a great website. If you don't know it, it's Marine Traffic. It's kind of like a boat data nerd's dream. Um, it's got all the information on like almost every single cargo vessel that's made, that's traveling on the open seas right now. Um, so, and since this is a boat issue, I thought I'd show this website. Um, if you guys don't know it and you have particular interest in boat movements, or ship movements, um, definitely recommend checking it out. So how will this, what does the data tell us about how this will affect the industry? And so we can go into global trade data and look at what we have available for Latin America. And we're looking at exports from Latin America. So this is every country in Latin America, the exports of every country in Amer Latin America um, or South America. And who their partners are. So what countries are they sending this, this fruit to? Um, and we can see that the biggest players are far and away the United States. Um, we can go more into this if, if need be, but uh, I kind of ran the calculation. About 75% of the Latin American fruit is going to the East Coast, um, if not, maybe a little bit more. So, and it's a fraction of, of the exports are then going up to um, Long Beach or Oakland um, or any of the other ports on the, on the West Coast. Then you've got obviously United Kingdom. Um, the Netherlands is the second largest market. And then minor volumes to China and Hong Kong. Those will obviously not be affected by anything that's going on in the Panama Canal. I think more tellingly as to what the impact of the Panama Canal drought is on, on the industry is this dip in exports. So this first bump that you can see here, that's the Peruvian season. The second bump is the Chilean season. And so Chile is strongest in January and starts fading off in February. Um, Right now, the Panama Canal still has water. It's still letting ships through. And if we go back to the charts where we looked at the five-year average water levels, we can see that in February, it's expected to go down, but it's not, not to critical levels per se. At least it's not expected to be critical levels. So in February, there should still be ships that are able to go through and... Um, and hopefully that won't have a drastic effect on, on shipments. I think around May is where, where I'd be worried that there would be um, more of a cut on, on the amount of ships that can pass through the, through the canal. But fortunately, that is the lowest point of, of exports. You know, before exports start picking back again, picking back up again in July, which coincides with the rainy season in Panama and hopefully with renewed water levels within the Katum Lake. Um, so that's, that's kind of that, that set aside. Um, and now I want to talk briefly about the other um, issue that's happening, um, which with the other canal that's famous in the world, which was the Suez Canal, but not just the Suez Canal, more specifically the, so what's going on with the Bab al Mandab? I, again, I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right. 
So the issue here, which I'm sure you've you've seen in the news, is Houthi rebels, which are based out of um, the west of Yemen, are attacking commercial ships. Um, initially, it was ships that have some kind of relationship to to, to Israel um, because of what's going on with, with Gaza Strip. And I think more recently, they've said that they would attack any U.S. flagship. Um, it's not great because of this, all of the major carriers, um, major container ship companies have stopped sending ships through the, um, through that strait that I can't pronounce. And so more and more ships, especially from Asia are redirecting directly through South Africa and then taking all the trip around Africa back to, back to Europe for our industry um the potential impact that this could have would be on exports from asia and eastern africa that would kind of naturally be directed through this canal to go to europe as opposed to all the way around africa um i think any, anybody that's getting the industry is going to get the feel that this isn't a, a huge effect, um, but we can quantify it. And I was curious to see, okay, how much is that actual effect and what, what do the numbers say? So that's what we're going to dive into now. Um, so we can look at Europe and look at the imports of Europe. So where the fruit in Europe is coming from. And we're going to do expand on this chart, which looks at the inputs by origin. This is partner subregion. So this is kind of a subdivision of the major regions, Europe, Asia, so on and so forth. And that's available in this chart. You click on that and I kind of already have it brought up. So, and what I actually want to look at is, um, so what, what do the major regions look like? Um, so this is partner subregion. We're going to take this and go to partner region. And I already did it. So these, these are the major regions. Um, NES is not elsewhere specified. So this is like fruit that's loaded on cruise ships or not elsewhere specified. Um, that's not going to like a specific country or anything like that. So that's, that's a bit of an oddity. We, we're not worried about that one. Um, what we are interested in is what's coming from Africa, which is a decent volume. And then what's coming from Asia. And Asia is really not, not that much. Um, we can see in 2022 from Asia. Uh, 1,734 metric tons were, were imported to the market out of 461,000 metric tons. Um, so yeah, that, that fruit wouldn't be missed very much, even if it has to travel further. Um, so I don't think there's particular concern over that if it didn't go by airplane to begin with. Um, Africa is kind of, it's, it's a more curious case. So the, what we're going to do to go to Africa is we're going to go to reporter region or actually partner region is going to be Africa. And we're going to compare by intermediary region. So this is the lowest level of aggregation that our service makes available. This is again, based on the UN standards for kind of grouping countries together. Um, and so we can pull that up. So here we got Africa and partner intermediary region. And so this breaks up Africa into Eastern Africa, which is the smallest one, um, mostly fruit coming out of Kenya. Um, middle Africa, Northern Africa, Southern Africa, Western Africa, so on and so forth. But what we can see from this is in 2022, a whopping 2,186 metric tons were exported from Eastern Africa to Europe. Um, we can further divide this up and see what country that's coming specifically from because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a data nerd. Like I kind of, I like these questions. Um, 
let's see we need to find ease a b c d e eastern africa and we're going to compare by partner so this is going to show us the exports by country from eastern africa going to europe and we can see that's pretty much all zimbabwe um some zambia yeah i am pretty much all zimbabwe um i was kind of wondering if it was going to be egypt that might have been thrown into a different region but anyway we can see it's it's not a huge volume um and that's that says that really the effect of this on the industry is not going to be very big with a massive massive caveat um Another reason that I'm creating this, this report is because this report just came out. This is Drury, they're consultants out of London. They track shipping and container prices, and this happened. So a massive spike in the cost of containers. Um, it was at 1,521 uh, dollars per 40 foot equivalent unit. And now that's, that's almost doubled. Um, it's not at the $10,000 uh, that we saw in the, in the middle of the pandemic and like that kind of craziness there. But this is kind of, so this is the global index. So this is all the shipping containers. And they have this broken out by transits from Shanghai to Rotterdam, Los Angeles, Genoa, New York. Um, and this is interesting because we can see all of the fruit that's kind of going to Europe has seen a massive increase in, in prices, but even the transits that are going straight from Shanghai to Los Angeles have seen a substantial increase in prices. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, that was $1,939. And now it's 2,726. Um, not, not a minor change. So, and this is mostly because of everything that's happening in, um, the Horn of Africa and the limits, basically the fact that all these shipping companies have stopped shipping through the Suez canal and are now redirecting all of their ships around, um, the Southern Africa. Um, so Although the blueberry industry has kind of is positioned to escape the, the biggest effects of um, the issues related to what's going on with um, the canals and specifically like all, all the shipping issues, the, the effect on the industry is, will, be effect, will, be, will be noted, will be felt. Um, especially in shipping class in shipping costs. So if from Shanghai to LA is being affected, I would have very little doubt and I don't have the data, unfortunately, but that from Chile to the East coast will likewise be affected. Um, so I, I think that's, that's the biggest takeaway. And, and I know I kind of say that right towards the end, but, um, but I thought this was really interesting. I wanted to kind of present this journey through through data and kind of news and what, what's going on in the world. And this is our first video of 2024. So we took it, we took a little break for, for Christmas and wanted to thank everybody for, for coming back. All 20 subscribers, I think that we that we currently have. And obviously our clients that um that do watch these videos, and that's who I get feedback from. Otherwise, this would be a lot of work for 20, 20 people to look at. But um, but no, we're I, I very much enjoy having these conversations and talking about data, talking about the industry, talking about how one thing affects another, and showing kind of parts, bits and pieces of the depth that uh, that this industry must deal with and account for when moving little tiny blueberries all across the world. Thank you very much. And that's, that's it for this one.